better. I'm here with you. Amen, Thanks, brother. How's Pennsylvania Great. treating you? Very good, man. It was a summer. I love it here. There's a bunch of deer in the backyard. That's cool. <laughs> so, I, I enjoy it in the summertime. Well, before we start our interview, I want to say thank you, thank you, thank you, because you are the instrument in my very good friend, my brother in Christ, Mark Wright, Chef Mark Wright, his book, uh, Healing a Community One Meal at a Time, is your creation, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah, yeah, our creation. Uh, your, <laughs> but, yeah. your creation, yeah. Well, what I mean um, is, you're, you're the person I put, in, I put in the middle in there to help him tell his story, and what a story, right? Oh yeah, it's it's uh it's incredible. And yeah, just published recently. We're gonna do a big launch soon. Um, obviously this is live, so in a few weeks. And yeah, he really he poured his heart into that book. Um, so you know if you're trying to, which in my opinion is, I, I was actually talking to somebody else about this. Um, and I'm, maybe I'm I'm curious what you think about this. I believe it's health has to be one of the first things that you are focused on because without health you got nothing else. And I think that's what Mark really brings, like with in multiple facets. But you know, his meal delivery and everything else he does. I mean, what do you have if you don't have your health? You know. So, um, and you, you know, you know this better than anyway. So, I, <laughs> I mean, so that's why it was just touching to to work with Mark, um, just because I I believe health is potentially the number one thing. But maybe there's some others, but I think it's one of the number one things. Well, the thing is that, you know, it's like you know, the analogy that we always use about if you have a, what's your, what's your favorite car, whatever your favorite car is, uh, yeah. let's just say mine, you know, I have a Camaro, but what if I, my Corvette, the Corvettes are my favorite car, but I'm not going to put 87 octane on a Corvette when I'm, I know I'm supposed to put 93 and, yeah. and what's going to happen if I, I keep putting 87, 87, 87, that Corvette is never going to ride the same. I'm not going to yeah. get my maximum out of it. So as a trainer for many decades now, my biggest thing is that what you eat is who you are. In other words, if you eat crap, you're not going to get the results you were, but you can get quicker results if you eat well and you know about protein and this and that. Well, anyway, that's another subject for another day. Yeah. But at the end of the day is that's what, again, that's what makes you healthy. For me, yeah. if I wasn't as healthy as I was, I probably wouldn't have survived the chemotherapy. I wouldn't have survived yeah. the cancer. And if I didn't know what I knew, I wouldn't be able to come back from it and get my body back in shape and go back into modeling and, and training and all that stuff. So Mar Mark and me just really connected years ago and he wanted to be an angel in my life and he is and Brickle Healthy Meals, uh, who sponsors the show, is his company and I eat his food every day. So it's basically a blessing in every way possible. But when I shared a story with you and I told him about you, I just really liked you, man. You're just a great friend. You're somebody that you're charismatic. You're, you're great at just communicating what it is that you can do with people. And I just knew that you were the person that could help Mark share his story in a way where it would impact even more people. Yeah, no, definitely. And I, and I feel, you know, the same about you, actually, I think, did we first meet at the Epic Talks conference? Is that where we first met? We met, I, I believe, either through uh, me. me <laughs> yeah, either Epic. I know every time we go to Epic Talks together, me and you gravitate towards each other. Yeah. And we always hang out the whole time. So well, I, we, I'm, you know, we did the, with the branding and we met through okay, there. Too, yep, and yep. I was hosting and I was speaking. And then you came and asked me, I said, what, have you written your book yet? And I said, I have an agent. Uh, but I did talk to you about doing another project of mine that we're still working on, um, which is more of a devotional book that I can launch every few, every few months. And we're still on the, pro and you know, we're hopefully going to, yeah. when you get back in town, we'll talk about that. Um, sure. But I just, you know, it's just a, a simple, simple book. But what you do is you get to, you, it's like me, man. I love telling people stories when I get to speak at a conference or things like that. And you get a chance to listen to their stories because you do a podcast for them as well to promote their yeah. book. Uh, you put them together with thousands and thousands of people that are in your in your download, uh, in your downline. And then on top of that, you are able to bring in authors, editors, people that know exactly what they're supposed to do to make sure that enhance what you already have to share, right? And you have an amazing team, brother, and uh, because you've literally done your homework. And that's what I wanted to share with you with the people because I want to tell about what you do a little bit too, you know? Yeah, no, I, I appreciate that. So to a little background, how it all started is I, I'll never forget when my first book came out, it was life-changing. I was actually 20 years old, 80 grand in debt, just dropped out of uh, college, and I was trying to figure my life out. I had no idea what I was doing. 
and I decided to write a book. <laughs> and then it, it like actually, what it did for me was more than just the book is like a brand. It would, it actually transformed my life because I was like, once I completed it, I kind of felt like I could do anything. You know, and once I became an author, I was like, okay, I achieved a huge milestone, and now kind of, um, I, I don't know, I just looked at everything differently. I was like, I can accomplish anything now that I did this, and to be able to do, kind of go on that journey with others, because your first book is, as you know, you, you know, it's um, it's a roller coaster. let's put it that, you know, I mean, a lot of emotions, when you first publish it, you're scared, what are people going to think, are you going to get a bad review on that, like, a lot of different thoughts go through your head, like way more than three. Um, so either way, just to kind of be like that supporting character in that journey for so many others, I'm honored to be. And then with the podcast, um, same thing, because as you know, there's really nothing else I'd rather do than talk to people. I like talking to people. Yeah. So. But people, the biggest thing is, you know, me as a life coach is you got to trust me with your story. Yeah. And you know firsthand how hard it is for people to be, you know, just raw and be able to yeah. share things with you. You know, what is one, what, you don't have to tell me the name of the book, but I'm saying, what is one person, what is the one story that you think was the hardest for anyone to share? Or one of them, right? It doesn't have yeah. to be the best one, but one that was the hardest one to share. What was the, what was the, the, the topic? What was the? Yeah, I could share one. So I'll leave the name out just because it's sure. sense. But this yeah. is what first came to my mind. You know me, I'm off the cuff, so I'll just give you what downloaded. Through. Amen. And this was, um, so this was a book. This was one of my first clients probably like seven years ago. I've been running the business for eight years. And she wrote a book. Uh, her father actually had committed suicide when she was like 15. Oh. And she had to like, you know, go through that, you know. And um, it, the whole book isn't centered around that, but that's right in the beginning. And then she kind of explains how she blossomed from there through writing and sharing her story. And then um, she built a whole community of entrepreneurial women and now she's thriving. Um, but you know, I just, I, I can't even imagine going through something like that ever. Right. But like, even just at that age, 15, you're not even like, you're just, you're definitely not fully developed. I mean, that's right. for sure. So um, that, that's what came to mind first, I'd say. Well, I'll tell you, you know, just listening to that, I, I've been a coach to women that have gone through the same, not the same thing, but the, uh, I mean, similar. And the biggest thing that I found out is, uh, I can tell you one of my clients was going through uh, 10, 15, 20 years of blaming herself. And she literally went through alcoholism, drug addiction, everything, because she just blamed herself for her father's passing. And after she gave that and said, it wasn't my fault. I don't know. I forgot if it was through somebody she had talked to. And then when I talked to her, I said, you need to write your book. You need to tell your story. And she's in that process now. She's actually uh, writing her book and right. sharing her story. But that's the thing. It liberates you because it's like forgiveness. It's such a big, big deal. And I don't know what she had gone through, but uh, I, I, I feel like they all go through something similar about that, that they, they feel like it's their fault that something like that would happen to their loved ones. I think it was something similar. Like I, I can't speak if it was exactly that, but I do know that she definitely went through like a, a rough patch. You know, fifteen. I think you're in like tenth grade or something. So then she high school and college was a lot of partying, and you know, which is I guess kind of normal. But like I think she went a little bit over Correct. the top with it. Um, but yeah, you know, it's almost like this is kind of downgrading it, but it's a, like if you believe it's your fault that's so much baggage correct like there's no way you could reach your full potential with that on your back mm -mm. like that i mean that's crazy you know so um did you yeah. ever did you ever think that this was, was i mean before you wrote the book yeah what did you think tyler wagner who is tyler wagner before you write the book uh, you know well i know we're going to talk about this later but this actually has to do with the word oh uh, okay then let's hold on to that let's hold on to that <laughs> let's hold on to that so <laughs> But, you know, one of the main things that I want to do with the show is, pre is present people that I believe have been an impact in my life or I believe are impacting the community, are impacting the world. You know, how many authors have you, and not right now, because you got eight years, how many authors have you been able to be a part of? How many authors have been in your, through, through your company at some point? I mean, it's, it's over 100, right? Oh, that, uh, so 
we're at almost a thousand clients. So that's, but you know, um, how many of that? Uh, Cause I more look at the impact. Sure. And, and, and you know, I just, um, I, it's probably, I'd say close to 10,000 as far as like that. I, cause you, I speak to, I try to connect with 30 to 50 new people every week. Correct. And I'm one of those types of people, every phone call I have, I'm just like, look, I don't, I mean, I don't care in a sense if we work together. Obviously, I'd love to work with you, but at the end of the day, I just want to deliver as much value to you on that phone call for 100% free. Correct. And then if you want to go do it on your own, go ahead. Like, I'm glad to be that way of support. So I say like 10,000 directly impacted and 1,000 worked with around. That's a good estimation. Well, you know, and we had this discussion and we talked about, you You actually said to me, David, what's other books? That, because I already had my main yeah. books already with an agent. But you said to me, and I said to you the same thing. I would love to self-publish, but I believe my cancer story is to millions. So that's why yeah. I want to get a publishing house. But when it comes sure. to everything else, we talked, and you're probably the only person that I've shared with you uh, a connection and say, listen, Tyler, help me with this. Yeah. So, I mean, the one thing I know is that self-publishing is not easy because you can sell, listen, it costs a lot of money to publish a book. You can go ahead and do it. But at the end of the day, how many copies are you going to sell to even make the kind of money that you need to make to break even? So the reason that I, I, I always share your story is because you have the platforms to be able to help people not just finish the book, but also, you know, promote the book so they can at least have uh, you know peace that they're going to make money as well in terms of selling the book and even if they break even but at least they break even they don't lose money you know yeah for sure that and see that's what i did over the years that's actually a, an actual practice that i use and this has not with publishing but just business in general and just life i 30 to 50 new people every week and i've been doing that pretty solidly for like four or five years I, I was doing it kind of unconsciously when I was just started out like eight years ago. Um, but because of that, what has happened and how I built Authors Unite was over these phone calls, what I would do is kind of bring together the best of the best in specific avenues. So what I, let's just say I'm connected with about a hundred editors. I, after the call, I'd be like, send me your work. Let All me right. review it. And then I would put them in my CRM, which it's a customer relationship yes. management. And then basically I have a CRM of about 3,000 people now that I've collected that I've personally spoken to and vetted that are editors, designers, uh, marketers, like uh, formatters, uh, dis distributors, anything you can think of in the avenue of uh, getting your idea out of your head to writing the book, to marketing it and you know profiting, anything you can think of. The whole Copywriting. Thing. <laughs> yeah, the whole thing. Literally, I have that's one of my tags in my CR. I click it, probably got like 20 copywriters, something like that. And these are all vetted. And, and what I kind of realized is I was like, in a sense, what I'm doing is supporting people, but I'm also saving them time. Because, not to say that, you know, people aren't good at what it's kind of hard. That we yeah. You got experts. You got experts in yeah, the field. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. When you go out into the free the freelance sites, they're they're fine. But when you go out, it's kind of hit or miss. You just you never quite know. So I just kind of always thought I was like, well, if I'm connected with all these people and I know they're good, then I, I can kind of package that. And, and you know what I mean? And like that, they're part of my Authors Unite team. Amen. So that's kind of how I built it. And that's the name of the company is Authors Unite. So as you can see, Tyler not only changes people's lives by being able to give them the tools to share their story but he also changes the lives of people that are doing copywriting editing and graphic designing and all the other things because they get a chance to work with him on multiple multiple uh, projects so at the end of the day he's changing lives in many many aspects that's one of the reasons tyler i wanted to bring you on the show and and tell people a little bit about you because you're that kind of person you're behind the scenes kind of you're that kind of guy that's like yeah i'm here and then the the guy that publishes the book but the person that they're looking at is the the writer or the person they're looking at is the face of the book, like Mark Wright, who's a chef, Mark Wright from Brick of Healthy Meals. And then you did the book. You're the one that, you know, put the whole wheel together. Um, you know, I did the introduction. You put the wheel together and now we have a masterpiece. So, yeah. well, let's go back to that word. Let's go talk about that word that you were, that, that gets you going. Uh, yeah. You know, I said, what is he doing before? He wrote his book. I asked Tyler. And he said, well, it goes back to the word. So tell us what word in your life 
that you can share with us. And then the meaning of that word, because I want people to, there's people right now, Tyler, that are thinking about what is their life meaning? What is their purpose? What is, what's going on now? What am I going to do? And I always share, this is the moment when you have that much time is when you're supposed to do things. But the funny yeah. thing is that we're always saying we don't have enough time, but now you have the time and then people are not doing anything. And that's because of the mind blocks, you know, a lot of it because you're like, you don't know what's next. So yeah. give us that word and let's give some inspiration to everybody listening For tonight. Sure. So, so I just want to be up front and say you did you right before we, we started. Absolutely. So the, def the definition might be a little, I'll give my best shot, but when you said that to me, the first word that came to mind was the word believe. Believe. And, and that word is because when I, before I wrote my first book, I, I believed I could do it. Even though it kind of seemed so crazy, like such a big aspiration, I, I still believed. And I think that's one of the biggest things is like I, everything I've accomplished, literally when you asked me that question, a download of kind of the last eight years of my life like kind of came through. And everything I've achieved, I already saw it before it happened. Like I already believed that it could happen and I kind of, I actually kind of visualized it and then it did actually happen because I, so I think it's the word believe and literally the vision statement of Authors Unite is we believe by helping authors succeed, we help the world succeed. And that was kind of the reason I, one of the reasons I started the company is because I, in my mind, I see authors as like leaders so, and obviously they have books to, like when your book comes out, there's a lot of value in that. So if I can help you, inevitably I'm helping all your readers. So if I can just focus on authors, I will inevitably help kind of the masses. Like that's kind of how I see it. Um, and then the definition of believe, I think it's, you know, something like, you know, having faith and, and seeing, seeing it happening before it happens that that's what's coming up for me something like that that's not the best definition ever, but, but, it, like but here's the thing it's not we're not rating the definition yeah, yeah. it's <laughs> the meaning of it that it means to you because there's probably someone listening right now that maybe thought the same way about something in their life and just by you saying the way you said it it hit them right and that's the thing how many authors have you met and you know they can say the exact same thing differently because it does impact someone in some way right well, I want to thank Tyler Wagner for coming on the show today. And Life Changers for Life is really about that. It's about life changers, people that are changing lives through their testimony or through their work or through their belief. And I love that word belief because one of the things that one, he's talking about belief and talking about visualizing, I remember being in the hospital bed knowing that visualizing the outcome of after cancer, not visualizing death, but actually I was visualizing life. I was visualizing what would I be doing after I survived and all those dreams that I had visualized had come to pass already and more hopefully to come remember the book's not written yet the documentary is not finished neither is the film but I know in the future God has perfect timing so I'll believe that that perfect timing will reveal a lot more because at that point I think that there will be the people that need it at that moment specifically will receive it but he is a life changer. Like I said, he's not just changing lives of the authors and people that are writing their stories, but he's changing the lives of people that are working with him, that are working hand on hand on these projects. And even the stories are probably changing the lives of the copywriters, of the editors, of those people. Because again, there are stories there that are gonna impact everyone in some way or fashion, right? So Tyler is really living his purpose. And like he said, he finally visualized, he believed he could do something, and he did do it. But after he did it, it revealed his purpose. Follow me on that. I said, your story will reveal your purpose. And what he's doing with the thousands of people that come to him is revealing their purpose. But he revealed his through finally doing the one thing that he knew he could do, but he had to believe. So I hope that today you add that to your story. Are you believing enough in your story? Are you believing enough in your projects? Are you believing enough in what your life's meaning is about? Belief. I couldn't ask for a better word today. Tyler Wagner gave us the word belief. And I hope that today it gives you hope. But I hope to listen to you and maybe one day you'll be sharing your story with Tyler and we'll be talking about this interview. Again, this is Life Changes for Life. And like I always say, find hope. Have faith.